Hello, I am Dr. Satish Rao, Professor of Medicine at Augusta University Medical Center and Director of Neurogastroenterology and Motility and the Digestive Health Clinical Research Center. So I've been asked to share with you some thoughts about pelvic floor dysfunction. This is a very common problem that affects up to one third of the population, comprises of multiple symptoms, difficulty with evacuation, constipation, anorectal pain or discomfort, uh, and, and using different maneuvers to facilitate bowel movements, using enemas and suppositories. All of these can be grouped under this one umbrella term of pelvic floor dysfunction. So patients can present with excessive straining, a feeling of incomplete evacuation, a need to use physical or digital maneuvers to pass stool, frequently spending hours together on the toilet, passing hard pellet-like stools, or using uh, or feeling the sensation of blockage in the rectum, just to name a few. Others may have unrelenting discomfort or pain, uh, constantly pushing them to go to the toilet, or sometimes some people feel a bulge in the rectal area, and so on. So a variety of symptoms that are confined to the lower part of the bowel, which are all related in one way or the other with difficulty with evacuation or pooping. These are the common symptoms. So how do we go about identifying these problems? Now, often in the clinic stage, we try and get a good history by listening to the patient carefully. Then we do a careful systematic rectal examination that tells us or gives us clues as to what kind of problem may be underlying these symptoms. But clearly, we rely on good diagnostic tests. Anorectal manometry is one of the common tests. Here, we place a small pencil-thick flexible probe with multiple pressure sensors into the rectum and the anal canal. The probe also has a balloon. By distending this balloon in a stepwise manner, we can simulate the arrival of stool in the rectum and assess how a patient perceives stool. There are patients who have normal stool sensation and there are others who don't feel stool-like sensation until a much larger volume of stool comes. These patients are called, they have a condition called rectal hyposensitivity. And there are others in whom even small amounts of stool will trigger a strong urge to go and there are patients who have rectal hypersensitivity. Likewise, with the probe inside the rectum, we have these patients push and bear down. And normally there's a simple pattern of pushing and normal evacuation. Patients with dyssynergic defecation or they are unable to coordinate the act of pooping will show this unique pattern where they obstruct their own flow. So this can be very easily identified with this anorectal manometry, and we complement that with a balloon expulsion test. So these simple tools, and sometimes with defecography, we place some barium into the rectum, or a colon transit study where we either give them a capsule such as wireless motility capsule or a radiopaque marker capsule. So these tests are all complementary in telling us whether there is a problem that affects the entire colon, such as slow transit constipation, or there is a more focused problem in the pelvic floor, or a mixed problem where there is a pelvic floor dysfunction, there is slowing of stool through the colon, and there is lack of sensation or too much sensation. So these complementary tests will give us a good understanding of what's going on. Once we have this knowledge of the patient's symptoms and these tests, we can use this knowledge to benefit the patients by targeting the treatment program. For example, if the patient is identified to have dyssynergic defecation, i.e. they're not able to coordinate how to poop or fail to expel the balloon, we use biofeedback treatment using visual, auditory, and verbal feedback techniques. Over six sessions of like a physical therapy type of treatment program, we can correct this dysfunction where unbeknown to them, the patient is obstructing their own pooping mechanism. So it's a simple treatment that we can effectively do. Or we may have to marry this with some form of laxative, something to stimulate the colon and the rectum to facilitate evacuation. 
or there are special treatment programs for patients who don't sense or patients who sense too much or patients with rectocele. Sometimes they may need corrective uh, surgery to try and fix these problems. So through a combination of these mechanisms, we can actually help a majority of patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. And there are several innovative tools that are coming up. We are having some new tests by which we can define more precisely colonic movement. We can define more precisely whether uh, there is a neurological dysfunction using a test called TAMS test. And we are also developing new treatments where we perform what we call as neuromodulation, where by changing nerve function, we can improve muscle function and thereby symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction. I hope you find this information useful in improved understanding of the problem, what are potential diagnostic tests, what will your physician ask you or what they expect you to let them know, and how they're gonna use these tests and information to guide and develop the best treatment program. Thank you.